Hey guys, Dr. Yu here. Today I'm gonna kind of jump to the scientific reasoning section. And the first lesson I'm gonna talk about is the scientific measurements using laboratory tools. Now I know I still have a couple of lessons left in the life and the physical sciences, but I got a request to talk about scientific reasoning first. So I'll finish this part and then I will go back to the lessons that I skipped, okay? All right, here are the objectives from the ATI. You need to be able to identify the unit of a measurement in the model. For example, there might be a diagram, an illustration or photograph given to you, and you need to identify the unit of measurement. You also need to be able to identify the numerical value of a measurement of an object. So I will have some um, practice problems on that. Next, select the tool necessary to measure volume, mass, and length of an object. So I will touch on that. I'll give you the tools that we usually use to measure these different things. And last, choose a scale unit appropriate for the object being measured. Well, what ATI will do is they will give you um, something, some kind of measurement, uh, and then you need to select a unit that's appropriate for the measurement. Okay, unit of measurement. So we have different categories of measurement and for each category, we'll use a different unit. Now, one thing you need to be careful about is that in the US, we use imperial system. So the, uh, for example, for measuring mass, we use units such as ounce, right, or pound. Those are the units from the imperial system. However, in the scientific world, we do not use imperial system. We use the metric system. And in fact, most of the countries in the world use a metric system. Uh, the metric system is also known as a system international. Uh, the abbreviation is SI. For T's, and just for you know, being working um, as a nurse, right? You're working with science. So you need to know all the units in the metric system. For mass, we use kilogram, gram, or even smaller, very, very small amount, that's milligram. For length, we use kilometer, meter, centimeter. So you can see the unit is getting smaller in scale, right? Kilometer is the largest, and you can go down to millimeter, which is very small for volume. Um, there, we, we're looking at two different kinds of volume, right? There's a volume for liquid, there's a volume for solid. For solid, um, the volume unit is usually cubic um, kilometer, cubic meter, cubic centimeter. So again, the unit goes from uh, larger scale to small scale. For liquid, for example, if you have to measure water or you need to measure, say, glucose solution, the units we commonly know, uh, the units we commonly use are liter, milliliter, and microliter. For time, that's the same for both metric system and imperial system. So we use hour, minute, or a second to measure time. All right, now you need to know um, the scale or how big each unit refers to. As right? so you kind of in your mind, you have to have this knowledge that, you know, how big. Uh, a, a meter is, right? And then kilometer is a thousand times of that. So in order to do that, I think a good way to get there is to remember the meaning of the prefix. This will kind of help you remember how big a unit is. So I found this table online. Um, it has most of the units that we need for T's, although it's missing two, but I will point them out. Okay. Now the first one, kilo. So that's a very big unit because kilo means a thousand times of a basic unit. For example, for measuring length, if meter is the basic unit, kilometer would be a thousand meters. There's a unit that's missing from the table. That's the prefix 10 times lower than kilo and that's hector. So hector is a hundred times of the basic unit. And then the next scale, which is 10 times of the basic unit will be deca. Now, most of the times you don't see 
the DECA or Hector. Uh, we don't usually use them a lot. So most of the times you would just see the basic unit, which is meter for a month, right? And then the kilo meter, which is a thousand times of the, the basic unit. Okay. So if I have to add it here, now we have two units. So we have a hector, that's a hundred times, and deca, that's 10 times. Okay. All right. Um, after that, we'll have the basic unit, which is not shown here. And then we're going to continue to go down, and that's going to be one tenth of a basic unit, and that will be deci. So decimeter would be you know, one tenth or 0 0.1 meter. All right. Next one, centi. Centi is a one hundredth of a basic unit. So centimeter will be one hundredth or 0 0.01 meter. Next one is a milli. Milli is even smaller. It's a one thousandth of a basic unit. So millimeter is one thousandth of a meter or 0 0.001 meter. If you have a ruler, usually uh, the rulers will have uh, one side for imperial system where you will see inches, and the other side will be for the metric system where you will see centimeters and millimeters. So if you're not familiar with those units, um, approximately how big those units are, then grab a ruler and look at the, uh, the units there. Look at the centimeters, look at the millimeters. If you're using a, a meter stick, then that will give you a general idea of how long a meter is. So that will help you a lot to kind of conceptualize exactly how big these units are. All right, so that's all the units that you need to remember for these purposes. Don't worry about these. Those are more in depth that are not required by these. Okay, the second topic is about select appropriate measurement tool. So you need to know the common tools we use in the laboratory to measure different things. For instance, to measure a length, we use a ruler or a meter stick. Okay, so in this case, the rulers that ATI refers to are the smaller rulers. They're usually about 15 centimeters. To measure volume, we're going to do that differently for solid and liquid. For solid, you need to measure the length, width, and the height of the, the solid ob object. Okay. Um, if you have a box to determine the volume, you need to measure the length, the width, and the height, and then you multiply all three numbers together, and that will be the volume, right? In this case, we have 10 times five times two, that's 100, right? And then the unit for length we use is centimeter, so the volume will be 100 cubic centimeters. Now for liquid, we use volumetric flask or graduate cylinder for large amount of liquid. If you need to measure, say, uh, 100 mils, 200 mils, you know, some of the volumetric flask, flasks and graduate cylinders can go up to 1,000 milliliters. We used to just call this mil, okay, so 1,000 mils. That's a very large uh, amount of the liquid. So that will be, a, that will be one liter. Okay, so that's uh, approximately one third of a gallon. Now we use a pipette for smaller amount of the liquid. Uh, say you need to measure one mil or less. So one mil equals a hundred microliter. Okay, so if you need to measure one mil or you know three hundred microliter, when that, if that's the case, then you need to use pipettes to measure the amount of the liquid. To measure mass or weight, we use balances. Our ATI mentions two types of balances, triple beam balance and electronic balance. This is the one that we most commonly use in the lab. The triple beam balance, I think it's pretty old fashioned. <laughs> we don't use them anymore in the lab. So uh, on the next slide, I will have some images to show you what these tools look like. So this is a ruler. So you can see this is the metric side. Um, this is the um, imperial system side, right? So these are inches. 
And on the other side, you can see it's labeled as centimeter, right? So this is a one centimeter. That's another centimeter. The even smaller space, for example, from here to here, that's going to be one millimeter. So you can see it's a very, very small one. So that's for measuring length. And for measuring volume, this is a volumetric flask. If on TEAS you have a question asking you which tool can uh, measure the volume of liquid and most accurately, the answer would be volumetric flask. So this can give you the most accurate measurement. And usually the line is kind of over here. So you can see this is the line for 100 mils. So if you add liquid until you reach this line, then you have 100 mils of the liquid. And that measurement is very, very accurate. Now, the, the problem with a volumetric flask is normally you can only measure one volume, right? Whatever this one's labeled for. So if you need to measure more kind of variable volumes, you can use a graduate cylinder. And that's what it looks like. And you can see, uh, you can measure any volume really, right? From so this is about five mils, from five mils all the way to 100 mils. So that's the range for this particular graduate cylinder. And you can do 55, you can do 69, right? So it gives you more kind of flexibility in terms of how much volume you can measure. For weight, for weight this is a electronic balance. We use this a lot in the biology lab. And this is what a triple beam balance looks like. So I think it's very old fashioned. Maybe it's still used in some labs, but I have never seen uh, a real triple beam balance in the lab. Next, you need to learn how to choose an appropriate scale. So different objects or substances will require a different measurement unit. Right? Sometimes you need to use a centimeter, but sometimes you need to use meter. So ATI may give you a specific object and what things you need to measure and ask you to choose the appropriate unit for that measurement. So I made some examples here. Hopefully this will kind of help you get a, a general idea of what you need to know. The first example is about body weight. Let's say you need to measure the weight of the 30 year old male. Now the unit that you need to use is kilometer. Kilometer, that's the appropriate weight unit for body weight, because we each person can weigh quite a bit, right? Um, we're not talking about just a, a couple of pounds, right? We're talking about 100 to 200 to 300 pounds. So when you convert um, pounds to the units in metric system, the most uh, appropriate one will be kilogram. So I have a, the conversion here. If a person weighs 80 kilograms, that's roughly 176 pounds. So that gives you an idea of the conversion factor. So about kind of twice, right? So the conversion factor is about two, because if you multiply by uh, multiply 80 by two, that's about 160, 160, right? So that's uh, relatively close to 176. Okay. So for measure body weight of a person or let's say a, a relatively large animal, like a dog, a cat, a lion, a bear, right? you want to use the unit kilogram. If you use gram, which is a smaller unit, that's gonna give you a very var large number. If you use a gram instead of kilogram, then that person's weight is going to be 80 multiplied by 1,000, right? Because this is 80,000 kilogram and kilo means a thousand. So that's going to be 80,000 grams. Oops, so that's not equal sign. So you can see that's a very large number. It's very kind of hard to keep track of. So in the scientific world, we want to use a number that's not too small, not too big, very easy to, uh, to see, to understand, to process. Okay. So in this case, we don't use a gram for body weight. We use kilogram in body weight measurement. Okay, next is body height. So for body height, we use a meter. For example, my body height is 1.65 meter. 
and that's roughly five feet and four inches. So when you want to measure someone's height, then you want to use meter. Now, if you use kilometer in this case, kilometer is too long, right? If you use kilometer to measure someone's body height, that's going to be, if you use, if you convert the meter to kilometer, my height is going to be, so divide it by a thousand, right? Move once, twice, three times. So that's going to be 0 0.00165 kilometer. So do you think as a nurse, you want to record 0 0.00165 kilometers on the, the medical form, or do you want to write 1.65 meters on the, the medical form? Definitely 1.65, right? And this kind of shows you, you uh, choosing the appropriate unit is important in the medical world, in the science world. Now for length of insect, now you need to realize these insects are usually much, much smaller than a human body, right? So now you might wanna choose a much smaller unit. So normally we use millimeter, right? If you don't remember what millimeter looks like, grab a ruler, right? Look at the metric side of the ruler, find a centimeter first, and then within each centimeter, you should have 10 millimeters. So each millimeter is very small. Uh, let's say you wanna measure the body length of a worker B, you wanna use a millimeter because a B is very, very small. So if you use millimeter, the length will be 18 millimeters, right? That's a, a pretty a good unit to measure the body length for a B. Um, and then for skin thickness, uh, if you want to measure how thick the body skin is, you also want to use millimeter because the skin is very, very thin, right? So you cannot use meter or even kilometer or even centimeter. So centimeter is still just too big to measure skin thickness. So you want to use a millimeter. Last one, small amount of a liquid. And so mill, again, refers to milliliter. And that's what we use for measuring small, small amount of a liquid. So let's say um, mouth rinse that you use in daily life. If you look at the inside of the cap, there's usually a line labeled with a 10 mils. So that's how much mouth rinse you should uh, put in your mouth. So 10 mils is a small amount, right? So you wanna use mil as the unit. All right, I made some practice problems. So let's look at question one. Which of the following is the correct meaning of milli? So go to that table that I included on one of the slides, right? That's the table with all the prefixes. Go to milli, that means one thousandth, right? One thousandth, which is 0 0.001. Correct answer is A. Number two, you need to measure 120 mils of water to dissolve a salt for an experiment. Which of the following laboratory tools should you use? Uh, just to kind of give you an idea of how much a mill is. I put in uh, some information down here. So I know we use teaspoons, tablespoons a lot in, in baking and cooking. So you kind of know what a teaspoon looks like, right? So one teaspoon is five mils. It's about five, mil five mils. So 120 mils um, is, you know, relatively large amount of water. So you want to use volumetric flask to measure that accurately. So use a flask. Pipette, that's for measuring small amount of liquid. Like if you want to measure, you know, 0.5 mil or 0.2 mil, you can use a pipette. If something that's bigger than, let's say 10 mils, you might want to use a volumetric flask or a graduate cylinder. B, that's used for measuring weight, and D is used for measuring length. Number three, now you need to measure 0 0.01 mil of water. So that's a very small amount of water, right? So now you need to use pipette. Uh, this is not just water. There are some other chemicals in here. I didn't make clear because water itself cannot denature DNA, right? So you need some other chemicals in there to denature DNA. Number four, which of the following values is appropriate for the length of the human humerus bone? So first you need to know where your humerus bone is, right? Your humerus bone is the bone in your upper arm. So you kind of have an idea of how long 
it is. So which unit would you choose? Now we're asking, we're looking at length, right? So A is not correct. So B, C, or D, which one would you choose? 30 meters, so look at how long a meter stick is, right? It's definitely a lot longer than your humerus bone, than your upper arm. So no, we cannot measure the length of human bones with meters, that's too long. 30 millimeters, so look at the ruler. 30 millimeters is three centimeters, and that's a very small length. That's about, let's see how many inches. Let's go back to this. So three centimeters, that's just a little over of an inch, right? Your humerus bone is definitely longer than one inch. So the correct answer is C, 30 centimeters. So that's about two rulers combined, and that's the average length of humus, human humerus bone. All right, we're done with the scientific measurements using laboratory tools. And so again, uh, good job, guys. Uh, I'll see you next time.